payload on this evening's Atlas II launch is the Defense Satellite Communication System, or DISCUS. The $160 million satellite will join eight other DISCUS satellites currently in orbit to provide high priority, worldwide, secure voice and data transmission. In fact, the DISCUS network provided more than 75% of all communications in Operation Desert Storm. Currently, four Phase II and four Phase III DISCUS satellites orbit the Earth at an altitude of more than 22,000 miles. The DISCUS spacecraft are built to withstand blasts from high-altitude nuclear explosions. Designed by General Electric, DISCUS has a lifespan of 10 years or greater. Final checkout and encapsulation of the one-ton satellite took place in January at the Spacecraft Processing and Integration Facility at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Earlier today, the Air Force's first Atlas II launch vehicle underwent final preparations for this evening's launch, scheduled for approximately 7.10 Eastern Standard Time. The launch window extends to 7.44 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The launch is a joint effort between the Air Force's 45th Space Wing and General Dynamics Space Systems Division. The Atlas II was procured primarily to support the DISCUS program and space test program payloads, along with other medium-class payload requirements. The 15-story rocket is a two-and-a-half stage vehicle providing greater propellant capacity than its predecessors. Propulsion is provided by a Rocketdyne liquid rocket set consisting of two booster engines and one sustainer engine. All three engines will fire at liftoff, producing 488,000 pounds of thrust. The upper Centaur II stage is a three-foot stretch of the previous configuration. It is powered by two Pratt & Whitney liquid rocket engines, developing 16,500 pounds of thrust each. Systems at Launch Complex 36 were refurbished and reactivated for the Atlas II, and Launch Pad 36A has been modified to accommodate the lengthening of the new booster. This is Air Force Atlas II Launch Control at T minus 41 minutes, 48 seconds, and counting. Launch sequence start. Mark. 
Launch sequencer has been started. We're at T minus 28 seconds and counting. Minus 20. Minus 11. T minus 10, 9, 8, minus eight. 7, 6, 5, 4, four. 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. We have ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the Air Force's first Atlas II carrying the Discus 3 satellite. Low programs and pitch programs are in. All three engines are burning well. Boosters and a sustainer. Vehicle looks smooth at this time. The propellant utilization system is in control at this time. Attitude disturbances at this time are light. All engines continue to look good. We have a liftoff time on the range of 741.02. Vehicle continues to look very smooth. All three engines are looking good at this time. We're now reaching, the vehicle is now entering the region of maximum dynamic pressure, where the velocity of the vehicle and density of the atmosphere combined create the greatest stress on the vehicle. Looks like a beautiful flight so far. The Atlas Attitude Control System has been activated. We're approximately two minutes, 37 seconds into the flight. Propellant utilization system is active. We have booster engine cutoff at 247 minutes into the flight. The booster has been jettisoned. We're now at 3 minutes, 17 seconds into the flight. Coming up on fairing jettison. We have fairing jettison. The vehicle is uh, now at 71 miles altitude, 175 miles downrange, traveling at a speed of 7,079 miles per hour. All systems re re look good. Coming up on sustainer engine cutoff. Vehicle still looks smooth. Now 
about four minutes, 33 seconds into the flight. We have SECO. We have sustainer engine cutoff. We have jettison the stage. Atlas and Centaur, Atlas has separated. We have both Centaur engines oh, up right. and burning. Uh, yes, that was the one we were talking about, guys. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> we'll pick up the voice of Skip Mackey coming directly from the telemetry data center here at Mission Control. Well, our dudes look very good. We're burning, burning oil and in control. It looks very good at this time. We're now five minutes, 27 seconds into the flight. All systems are performing within margins. Everything looks good to this point. Very clean. There's very little to talk about. The uh, system appears to be activated. Everything continues to look well. And both engines are burning very nicely. You're now seeing, seeing a view inside the telemetry lab here at the Mission Director's Center, where they are monitoring all data. That's good, because everything is doing just fine. We're looking for main engine cutoff one at approximately 11 minutes, 13 seconds into the flight. Still very little to, to report. Uh, both engines burning very nicely. Data is extremely good. Has been all evening from all sites. Guidance looks good. Everything looks very good at this point. We're now seven, seven minutes, 18 seconds into the flight. Everything still looks good. Again, I have very little to report. Both Centaur engines continue to burn nicely. Pressures, temperatures, all within specification. Guidance looks like it's taking us right down the middle. It uh, looks very clean at this time. Okay, Centaur BU is now in active control. We're now eight minutes, 39 seconds into the flight. The PU system is uh, moving around again now. It looks like it's in, in complete control. Both Centaur engines continue to burn very well. We're expecting main engine cutoff in approximately two minutes. It's all going fine. 
Chemnitz, Gary, I'm three. Go ahead, Mark. All systems continue to look good. The vehicle is shown to be dead center on the range tracking system. We're now 10 minutes into the flight. EU continues to be in active control of the Centaur burn, and both engines are behaving normally. Approximately 30 seconds to go on this burn, and everything looks fine. Again, we're looking for main engine cutoff one on the Centaur at approximately 11 minutes, 13 seconds into the flight. We have Mika. A second or two of normal. Cut off with good. We have Mika. We have main engine cutoff number one on the Centaur stage. We will now go into a coast period for approximately 13 minutes and four seconds. Be on at this time. Are on. For those of you watching, we now have attitude control jets functioning. We appear to be in a nominal coast. For those of you watching, the satellite transmission will now show you an animation of the separation of the spacecraft and its integrated Apogee boost system from Centaur. Booster engine cutoff and booster package jettisoned. Payload fairing jettisoned. Sustainer engine cuts off and Atlas separates from Centaur. Centaur spins up to 4 RPMs and separates from the discus and IABS. Discus IAB spins up to 28 RPMs. IAB's main engines burn to near geosynchronous orbit. D-spin and separate discus from IABS. Solar arrays deploy. and Sun acquired. Acquire Earth. Deploy gimbal dish antenna. Begin 53-day test and calibration period. <laughs> 